In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we gather this morning, let us take a moment to mind our sin and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God May have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, govern both in heaven and, and on earth, and mercifully hear the mercifully pleading of your people, of your people and, bestow your and bestow your peace on our times. On our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. All the elders of Israel came into a body to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Now that you are old and your sons do not follow your example, appoint a king over us as other nations have to judge us. Samuel was displeased when they asked for a king to judge them. He prayed to the Lord, however, who said in answer, Grant the people's every request. It is not you they reject. They are rejecting me as their king. Samuel delivered the message of the Lord in full to those who were asking for a king. He told them, The rights of the king who will rule you will be as follows. He will take your son and sons and assign them to his chariots and horses, and they will run before his chariot. He will also appoint from among them his commanders of groups of a thousand and of a hundred soldiers. He will set them to do their plowing and his harvesting and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will use your daughters as ointment makers, as cooks and as bakers. He will take the best of your fields, vineyards and olive groves and give them to his officials. He will tithe your crops and your vineyards and give the revenue to his eunuchs and his slaves. He will take your male and female servants as well as your best oxen and your asses and will use them to do his work. He will tithe your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When this takes place, you will complain against the king whom you have chosen. But on that day, the Lord will not answer you. The people, however, refused to listen to Samuel's warning and said, Not so. There must be a king over us. We, too, must be like other nations, with a king to rule us and lead us in warfare and to fight our battles. When Samuel had listened to all the people had to say, he repeated it to the Lord, who then said to him, Grant their request and appoint a king to rule them. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. For you are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to his Holy One of Israel, our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door. 
and he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. Unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above him. After they had broken through, they let down on the mat, they let, excuse me, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to them, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who alone but God can forgive sins? Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking to themselves. And so he said, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, pick up your mat and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your mat and go home. He rose, picked up his mat at once, and went away in the sight of everyone. They were all astonished and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. So I'm sure that the owner of that home was not terribly wild about the fact that he just ripped the roof off of his home to let this paralytic down. Um, but it must have been quite a scene because my guess is that they probably um, carried the man on some type of mat or animal skin of some sort, um, woven mat. Um, can't imagine it was a very easy trek for them. Um, but he was their friend, the assumption is anyway, he was their friend. And uh, they would do anything to get him the help that he needed. Um, and of course, we see that in our own lives, for our own family and for our friends, oftentimes we'll do whatever we need to make sure they get the help that they need. And so both the faith of the four men, um, assuming that they had the same faith of the paralytic, but I'm sure he begged them or asked them if they would do this for him. It is his faith that really, um, really healed him. Jesus was able to do that healing. Why? Because the man had faith that he was able to do it. There's a, um, there's a reflection from uh, Rabbi Harold Kushner. Um, I, I've read a number of his things. And, and he says, friends have been defined as people who know you at your worst and like you anyway. People in whose company you can be yourself. But perhaps more than anything else, friends are people who care about you for who you are, not what you can do for them. There is a kind of holiness in true friendship, because it makes sure that we are never alone when we desperately need to not be alone. The four roofers, really the four, um, the four roofer friends, if you will, um, really are an example of that. Um, it was not only their faith in Jesus, but it was the recognition that their friend needed assistance, that he needed their help, and the only way that he was ever going to be able to get there was through their efforts. And so it's a wonderful example, I think, to us of the great friends that we have and the need for us to make sure that we do everything we can to hold fast to those friendships because they are indicative, I think, of the relationship we have with our Lord in the sense that, you know, Jesus made great friends in his life. They were very, very important to him. The, you know, the 12 that surrounded him, but even beyond that, Mary Magdalene and, and his own, well, his mother, but certainly she was a, a friend in some sense. And uh, all the other people that were part of his life, it was what, what enabled him, empowered him to do the great ministry that he did. And I think our friends are a, a part of that in our own lives. I mean, family, of course, too, but, um, but certainly friends are an important thing that we remember today. So may like those young, or I assume they were young, but maybe they weren't, um, the men who uh, carried that, that man to, his, um, to the place of Jesus' feet where he is healed. May we um, embrace our friends in the same way and do everything we can to empower those friendship to continue to grow and become stronger. Please stand. As we strive for holiness by following God's commandments, we turn to him with our prayers. 
that the church throughout the world may be sanctified through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. That God may guide the leaders of nations in the ways of peace and justice, let us pray to the Lord. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and made confident in the hope of the resurrection for their loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. That our community here of Saints Peter and Paul may grow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit through word and sacrament, so as to know and understand God more fully, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, and today we remember especially Nellie C. Perone, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. And finally, for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God and Father, we offer these prayers with confidence in your divine mercy. And we ask that you answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as For through just your as beloved through Son you created, created the human race, human race. so also so through also him with great goodness you formed it anew. Formed it anew. And so it is, and so it is, it is right it is that right all your creatures, all serve, creatures you, serve you, all the redeemed, all praise you, praise and all your saints all with your one saints heart with one bless, you. bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful as celebration, in celebration we acclaim. We acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, mystery of we faith. proclaim your death, o Lord, your death, o Lord, and profess and your resurrection, resurrection until you come until again. You come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our Remember brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep, asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome, welcome them into the light of your face. Have, have mercy on us all, we pray, all with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Mary, Mary, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of the sign. Lamb of God, God, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. Let us pray. Let us pray. We ask of you, (coughs) Almighty God, God, be graciously graciously pleased to grant grant that those you renew with your sacraments sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing pleasing to you. Through Christ Christ, our Lord. Lord. The Lord be with you. you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord. Lord.